Hello and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Today we're coming to you from a farm, but this is no ordinary farm. In fact, it's a biogas farm, and this is why we're here. Today there is a huge need for energy to provide heat, for example, so one can have hot water for bathing or for cooking a meal. But access to such energy is not easily accessible for many who, as a result, have turned to charcoal burning or illegal logging for firewood. This is having catastrophic effects on the environment. Deforestation means trees are being felled, which results in climate change and in animals losing their natural habitats. Huge acres of land across the country are being threatened due to this need and demand for energy. And that's where Dominic Wanjihia comes into the picture. In a bid to reduce logging and pollution, he started to make an alternative type of energy known as biogas. It is a renewable, non-polluting, environmentally friendly, more affordable gas, which also reduces the greenhouse effect. And he explains that it's just a simple technology for rural energy. So at this biogas farm, these guys behind me, these cows, are actually the stars of the show. And you'll find out why in just a moment. But also amongst the cows, that is Dominic Wanjihia. And we're going to find out a lot more about biogas through him. Hi, Dominic. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very well. Good, good. So here are these cows and uh, they contribute a lot to biogas, right? Yes, yes. Um, Dominic, before we get into what role they play. Why did you come up with the creation of uh, biogas in the first place? Um, I was given a challenge to come up with a solution for uh, Maasai community who are cutting down the trees uh, in the disbursement area behind Nairobi National Park. And them being pastoralists, it didn't make sense to um, propose, they've got a lot of cow dung, it didn't make, uh, make sense to propose a constructed system. So I proposed a flexible system. I was working with flexible materials, making water tanks and all, and said, well, why not? I'm sure it can work for a biogas plant. And yeah, Flexi Biogas was born. Wow, all right. So there's so much to learn about Flexi Biogas. But um, what was the main challenge that uh, this community faced? Um, they had a lot of dung. They were collecting firewood. The women were being always in, you know, in line with uh, uh, wildlife conflict, uh, buffaloes, lions in the forests mm -hmm. and what have you, because that's the only forest is actually more or less inside the park. All the other trees have already been felled. Right. So there is always that danger that the women were addressing. And also because the, the, the because of the charcoal uh, production, the trees are getting, the big trees that drop firewood are no longer there. Mm -hmm. So the trees, they, they're having to walk further and further away from home. Uh, to collect uh, usable volumes of, of firewood. So Dominic, you mentioned the word dung and actually here on this farm I do notice that there's a lot of dung uh, around yeah. us. Yeah. How does cow dung um, benefit uh, human beings through biogas? How does it work? Uh, well, cow dung is actually, um, I should say, blessed with the correct uh, cocktail of microorganisms that when you put the dung in an anaerobic environment or an oxygen-free environment, um, it will continue fermenting and release uh, methane. Right. Now, methane is the flammable gas in biogas that we desire, that mm -hmm. we want for, for, for our heat energy uh, purposes. So, so cow dung is a very good catalyst to start any biogas digester. Really? Yeah. Well, who would have thought that, first of all, dung comes in handy um, yeah. and, and also cow dung of all, uh, yeah. of all animals. So you, you have the system going. Uh, can we go check it out? Where Absolutely. is, where is the, the dung that's used to create biogas? We've got all the domestic systems um, down at the other end of the farm. Okay. We can go across there and have a look at that. All right, let's go do it. Yeah. So, Dominic, what are we looking at over here? It looks like mini, mini greenhouses. Is that what it is? Um, well, they are, essentially. Inside the greenhouse is actually the biogas digester. It's a very, very simple longitudinal um, envelope or tube uh -huh. that you feed from one end and the substrate flows across and exits the other end. So it's basically simulating the mammalian uh, digestive system. So what's happening in our bellies when we eat breakfast and then lunch and then dinner? 
the same kind of system is taking place Precisely. Precisely. We, we process our food in batches. Okay. So this is allowing the system to operate in batches, as opposed to operating like the larger systems, the conventional systems that operate as a very big uh, tank uh -huh. where you mix all your different meals together. Okay, all yeah. right. And right in front of us is what looks like a big bucket of cow poo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is yeah. that what it is? It is a bucket of cow poo. So the average well-kept uh, cow will give you one bucket of cow dung, uh, like that. Possibly even more. One actually. cow gives you this much one in a cow day? Easily. Wow, yeah. that is a yeah. lot of poo. Ca cows <laughs> eat a lot. Cows eat a lot. I mean, cow cows are actually quite difficult animals to, to take care of. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. what's this? Because it looks, um, it doesn't look very pleasant. Uh, it looks like dirty water. It is dirty water. It's used water. It's recycled water. So it's grey water from. Uh, from the house, from the sink, from the from the shower, from the laundry, all of these waters can be can be recycled. So you and don't used. have to use clean water to create biogas. No, it's it, it's a waste of clean water. Really? It's it, it's much much. There, there's food value, especially in kitchen water that's mm -hmm. been that's been used to wash your your plates and dishes. Oh, it's wow. got food in it. So you really want to you know uh, to utilize that. Utilize that exactly. Okay, yeah. so what happens here? Take us through it. Uh, basically, you. As like when you eat a meal, mm -hmm. you'll always drink almost as much as you've eaten. Right. So the principle of a stomach, is, that is mm -hmm. the digester, is a stomach just like your stomach. Yeah. So you mix it one to one, okay. uh, dung to uh, water ratio. Okay. So this is one bucket of dung. It's about 25 kilos. Oh, wow. That's what a cow ingests in a day. <laughs> uh, yes, precisely. All right, come have a look yeah? at this. It uh, look. Ooh, okay. Well, you know, what? I've got to say, I did just get a whiff of the yeah. smell of poo, but yeah. it's not as bad as as I thought it would be. I mean, standing here, honestly speaking, you might think that this is rather unhygienic, but you can see there's no flies. There's nothing crawling yeah. around. And yeah. um, in terms of smell, I can't really smell much at all. Yeah. Why is so, that? Um, at this stage, you might get a few flies around the cow dung. Okay. Um, but that's purely because it's still fresh. It's still fermenting. Uh -huh. um, once it's in the system, the only place that's exposed to the air is the little round bit inside the pipe. Okay. So you're not going to get any flies going down there. It's dark and All right, what have good you. All right, stuff. Um, so I'm going to roll up my sleeves because yeah, I'm going to give you a go. hand. Yeah. <laughs> so Let well, me just break up the okay. big bits and then okay, you can now, stir it. Yeah. Now as you're breaking this up, I can... Yeah. I can get a whiff of them. Um, so I'm just going to stir this. Yes. Okay, and this is fresh cow dung. Nothing's been, ha been um, nothing, it's not been treated yet at all. No, it's just okay. straight from the, from, <laughs> from cow the cows booty. behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, yeah. so am I doing this right? Because yeah. uh, I guess you need to be pretty strong to do this. Should I give you a hand? <laughs> yeah, you can do. Okay. Oh. So, you oh, okay, there you go, you make up. it look easy. <laughs> you just want to break it up and make it soupy, yeah, to break up the clumps. If there's any soil or stones, uh, heavy things, they'll uh -huh. sink to the bottom. So when you're pouring it in, you just don't pour the last, you know, cup full. Okay. Just to stop it from... Um, but does, does everybody who wants to create biogas have to have a cow have to own a cow because that's not so feasible is it no uh with with conventional systems unfortunately yes because okay. they, they they work only on cow dung or pig dung mm -hmm. uh, but with our systems with flexibiger systems you can run any biodegradable matter from uh, cow dung chicken dung uh, you know chicken dung will uh, make a conventional system go rancid, go okay. acidic, okay. and that's the end of it. You have to then, you know, flush the whole system and start again. Right. But these systems, they have, they handle chicken poop no problem at all. And what about, um, you know, used sort of vegetable skins and all of that? You know, what's used like for compost? Absolutely. Okay. The provided an animal will eat it, mm -hmm. the digester will digest it. Okay. The higher the food value the higher the, the gas production. Right. So for instance, vegetables and, and what have you will give you five to 10 times more gas than cow dung. Uh -huh. Cow dung is actually the lowest end of the food chain. They give you the least amount of gas. Really? Um, anything else will give you more. Okay. And then the more uh, oil you have in plants, the higher the calorific value, mm -hmm. the more gas you get. So oily plants like castor, um, uh, cooked restaurant food, things mm -hmm. like this that normally cooks with oil. Yeah. Uh, you get very, very high gas production from those. So are we almost done now with yes. the mixing? Yeah. 
I can probably help now with the final yep. with the final bit. This is a lot easier. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> cow dung that's yeah. very soupy, as Dominic says. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to add a bit more water. It's okay. still looking a bit thick. I think the cow dung had been on the ground for a while. Okay. So let me add a bit more yep, water. Yeah, sure. You want it to have a smooth yogurt-like uh, texture. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Okay, go for it. Okay. So, I'm looking at this funnel, Dominic, and um, again, in the village, what if somebody doesn't have uh, this concrete system that's over here? What is this? It's actually not necessary. Uh, we were just experimenting. This is like a research laboratory uh -huh. where we do a lot of testing, what have you. Okay. So if you are particular about not wanting to mix like this, yeah. then you can put it in here and mix it and then just pull the cork and it drains down. Okay. But because we're dealing with such small volumes, yeah. one bucket of cow dung will literally it'll cook you githeri very quite easily. Really? Yeah. It's all you need for all your domestic cooking. So there's no real point in going into an extra expense of a big concrete uh -huh. mixer. Right. So, because it's just one bucket of dung, one bucket of water. Yeah. And then you just pour it straight into the, straight down the funnel. Okay, so yeah. is this now ready for pouring? It looks rather smooth and silky. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. So let me, let me use this bucket. It's already poopy. Great. <laughs> no gloves here. Um, I'm on a farm. And farm workers don't wear gloves. Okay, so yeah. this. Um, so what? What am I doing? Just scoop some up and pour it in the funnel. Okay. I'm not sure which side is easier for you. All right. Well, like about that much. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is pretty heavy. All right. Oh. Okay. I gotta get used to this. Okay. So I just yeah. pour this in. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it just sounds like a toilet. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, so how much of this needs to be poured in? Uh, basically oh. all of this. So you want to get rid of uh, one bucket of cow dung, one bucket of water. Okay. Most of our clients, um, people who have them, we ask them how much do they feed their systems. We always recommend one bucket of dung, one bucket of water. Uh -huh. And they'll tell us they use one bucket of dung and one bucket of water every two days or ev even every three days. Oh, wow. And you mentioned your clients. Who are some of your clients? Mainly rural farmers for these domestic systems. Mm -hmm. Rural farmers, peri-urban farmers, people with... Uh, some of them don't even have cows. Okay. Um, they'll just have some chickens because the system works very well with chickens. Uh, pig farmers also. Um, but ma ma basically people who have really made a... A commitment to themselves mm -hmm. to get away from the hassles of firewood and charcoal and especially the smoke in the kitchen yeah you know there is a world health organization say that 88 almost 8 million people women and children below the age of five die from smoke from indoor pollution right uh, and that's when they're cooking in the kitchen precisely. so this is this is a solution and we'll find out more about that precisely. in just yeah. a moment okay yeah. Oh God. So. Okay, super. So now what? Take us through this process. <laughs> so what's happening now is um, the, this pipe is connected to the front end of the tube. All right, let's have a look. The pipes is connected underneath the tube, so you can't really see the, the pipe connection. So the system is basically a big um, tubular envelope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yes. That sits above the ground, so there's no there's no digging. Okay, Absolutely so this no is all over ground. One hundred percent above and, the ground. And this ideally could you know sit on somebody's farm or, or, or property where they have perhaps some space. Exactly. Okay. Um, you don't even have to own the property because yeah. it's when portable. It's very, very portable. Okay. So Dominic, what is this filled with entirely? Is it just cow dung? The cow dung that's gone through? 
In these particular domestic models, yes, we filled it purely with cow dung. Okay. So uh, when we start the system, we load it with about two drums, mm -hmm. about 400 kilos of cow dung and 400 kilos of water. So you, you, it, it only holds about 800 uh, liters in it. Okay, so let's cover this. And as we walk, I want to understand what is happening in here exactly. You mentioned that it's um, the same thing as what happens in one's human's digestive system. Precisely. It is an absolute, it's just a digester, just like your stomach is a digester. Yeah. And what it's doing is, uh, for instance, when we want to increase fermentation of anything, when we want to make yogurt, mm -hmm. uh, we heat it up. Yes. When you want to inhibit uh, fermentation, you cool it down. Mm -hmm. So we've brought this above the ground and we put it inside a greenhouse. So it's making it very, very warm. Aha, uh -huh, that is providing more insulation. It's, yeah, it's providing insulation at night. The heat can't yeah. escape but it's absorbing all the UV. Even though it's cloudy now, yeah. it's actually quite warm in there. Okay. The UV is still getting through the greenhouse fabric and heating up the, the digester. And that heat is then helping the fermentation process. Precisely. Yes. Wow. It increases it. So the, where, what this achieves is that that one bucket of dung we've just fed, <laughs> yeah. like I said, will give you all the gas you need for one day, which is about 1,000 to 1,500 liters of gas. Yeah. Uh, in a conventional system, you need five cows oh. to give you the same amount of gas. Okay. So this is so super you're, efficient. You're better in comparison. off just doing this at home. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And and definitely, there's so many benefits. We'll talk a little bit more about yes. that. But what am I seeing here? So what's happened is the food has gone in there, and what we fed has just pushed a bit across. Has pushed a bit more across. Mm -hmm. So yesterday's food has moved one step. The day before, you moved one step. Yeah. So there's about 20 days of food in here. Okay. The 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 what you, what's called the retention time uh -huh. is about 20 days. So by the time it gets to here it has fully finished fermenting. Mm -hmm. It's no longer producing anymore. The gas has all been captured inside the system. Okay, and that also is perhaps why it's um, a little bit bigger and um, the, the container. Well, it swells when the gas, yeah. yes, when the, the was, gas. as the gas is, is, is released, the system just balloons. It right. actually, is, it is, you know, it turns, it, it, it uh, uh, expands. Mm -hmm. um, as it expands, when it gets warm, the gas will expand also. It will then push the slurry out, the exhausted slurry. Um, out of this end. Okay. Now, like your digestive system, the food is fully broken down into its micro elements. Mm -hmm. um, there's no intestine on here to, re to remove those <laughs> micro elements, yeah. which means that inside this liquid is dissolved minerals. Wow. So exactly the same minerals that were in the soil that the plant initially up, you know, took up mm -hmm. and turned into plant, plant matter and then the animal digested it and then we further digested it. We've done the reverse process of, of photosynthesis. We've done, you could call it reverse photosynthesis. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, this doesn't, again, smell at all. There's no flies fluttering about. And um, this ultimately is what will help people improve their vegetable growth in their shambas Absolutely. and also, um, you know, create gr gas, help with their cooking at home. Like you said, githeri can be made using this. Exactly. Wow. It is. It's one. Of, it's the richest. One of the richest organic fertilizers um, you can you you can you can make actually. So, do you just take this and pour it uh, onto onto your plants or amongst the soil, or do you mix it with compost for the shamba? Both. You okay. can mix it as a top dressing. You mm -hmm. can mix it in with your compost to to to, to dress your soil before planting. Mm -hmm. You can use it as a foliar feed, and you spray it onto very hungry plants like strawberries and roses and these sort uh, not roses, sorry, tomatoes. And how is that better than using a fertilizer? Let's now focus on on the environment because we need to be environment Chemicals. conscious. Chemicals. Chemicals. Let's look at all of the uh, diseases that we're all getting susceptible to. Yeah. Look at, and it's not just the chemicals in the plants that's making us sick. It's actually because when you feed ke plants chemicals, the plant is weak. And so the plant gets, is susceptible to mm -hmm. diseases and to, uh, you know, infestation of insects and what have you. So we spray those insecticides and fungicides on the plants as well to kill the other things. And basically we end up consuming those as well. Wow. So this is, it actually works. All of the tomato planters and all, everybody who's used this as a foliar feed, they say that the first thing they notice is they don't have any pests on their plants. So Dominic, really biogas is benefiting the people and also the environment in so many ways, but there's still more to learn and we will do that in just a moment. But we've got to take a breather on NTV Wild Talk. We are coming to you from a biogas farm. Here though is your wild guess question. How many litres of biogas can one bucket of cow dung produce? How many litres of biogas can one bucket of cow dung produce?
To participate, you must like the NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer on the timeline associated with this question. Answers sent via Twitter will no longer be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins one night for two people at the wonderful Superior Hotels Lake Naivasha Resort. The winner also gets one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply. Last week's lucky winner has been announced on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk. Here's a reminder of our wild guest question. How many litres of biogas can one bucket of cow dung produce? How many litres of biogas can one bucket of cow dung produce? To participate, you must like the NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer on the timeline associated with this question. Answers sent via Twitter will no longer be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins one night for two people at the wonderful Superior Hotels Lake Naivasha Resort. The winner also gets one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply. Last week's lucky winner has been announced on the NTV Wild Facebook page. So I'm still on this biogas farm with the expert, Dominic. Now, what I see here is a pipe connection. What is this all about? This is your gas line. This is where the gas comes out of the system. That's the gas now created from the fermentation Precisely. of the cow dung. Yes. Wow. So the pipe is attached to the center of the tube over there in the middle, as you can see at the highest point. Yeah. So the gas flows down as the, from the warm environment, the pipe is going to hit a cold environment. And so you're going to get condensation. Mm -hmm. So the water will flow downhill and backwards. And that's why we have the water trap that catches the water, uh -huh. which drains into the bottle and keeps the, the, the pipe clear. Okay. So your gas will get to your point of use. So where is that point of use? Let's follow the pipes. Yes. Point of use is basically directly to your kitchen. Ah. So there's no, there's no more, there's, there's nothing in, in, in line with it. There's no need for cylinders or containers or balloons or anything. This, this actual digester acts as the balloon itself for the gas holding. All right, so let's have a look then. What do we expect in here? This is just a normal uh, domestic kitchen, Karibu. Uh -huh. Asante. In here, we've this stove uh, we supply with all of our systems. Mm -hmm. So it's a twin burner a desktop stove. Um, we, ha we always have one control in here just for safety and yeah. for uh, being able to switch off, make sure the kids don't waste the gas. Mm -hmm. Nothing can go wrong. Okay, the, 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 the gas is very safe. Um, as you'll see from the color of the gas. Oh. It, the deep blue. Yes, and this is, is different from your ordinary stove, isn't it? Absolutely. The, the, the normal gas is much, much lighter green uh, than this. So really what we're seeing here is gas on a stove that has been created from cow dung. And this can be replicated in any home, in any village, anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere where there's organic waste. And where there's humans, there's always organic waste. So guarantee that... The, it's, it's the only form of energy that I can safely say is actually truly renewable right. because there will always be 
organic matter to feed the biogas digester. And this is clean and safe in the house. So anyone cooking in the house, they are safe from any emissions. Absolutely. There's no pollutants. When you burn biogas, when you burn methane, it gives off water and carbon dioxide, which is completely inert, completely harmless. In the form of, LP, in the form of uh, methane, mm -hmm. it is uh, considered a greenhouse gas and is thinning the ozone layer. So if you have too much gas, don't release it. Burn it off. Okay. You know, boil some water, do something. But of yeah. course, biogas is not just used for cooking. It's used for so many other things. What else do you have here? Conventionally, it has only been used for, bio for, um, for cooking. But what we've, with our systems, because they're so efficient and you have such a large volume of gas, mm -hmm. you can use it for so many more applications. Okay, and what are you going to show us here? This is one application that I'm sure nobody likes to give up <laughs> in their homestead. Oh, is a shower. That's what's in here. Okay. Yes. So we have to boost the pressure of the gas using an electric pump. Uh -huh. So the electric pump is actually running on a solar system. So there's no, still off grid, 100% off grid. The entire building is off grid. Uh -huh. And then when you turn on the water, if you look inside there, you will see the, the gas has lit. So there's actually a flame in there. Yes. Yes, there is. Wow. And if you feel this, you'll feel the water's getting warm. Oh, yes. This is a now great, you can wash a your great hands. opportunity for me to wash my smelly cow dung hands. Wow, this feels so nice and warm. Yeah. Oh. So it's, 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 it's warm water on demand. So you're not heating up water and letting it cool down in a tank. Yeah. There's no way, absolutely no waste of energy. Oh, wow. And I can see it's actually getting really, really hot and um, it's, it's getting pretty steamy as well. Yes. Yeah, so I can turn it right up so that if you are a dairy farmer, for instance, you need, you need hot water for cleaning your udders. Mm -hmm. If you're a chicken farmer, you need water to, to defeather your chickens when you slaughter them. Yeah. You can use it for um, pasteurizing milk and for incubating yogurt. There's numerous use, uh, uses for... Uh, so this is actually now, it's, it's, it's actually it's it's going to boil. Yes. It's getting very, very hot. There yeah. are so, so me, many uses. Let me cool it down. Yeah. So huge, huge benefits. But Dominic, yes. are enough people using this system? Um, we're, the, we're like the first people who are getting into uh, educating people on the fact that biogas is not just cooking fuel. Yeah. It can be used for so many other, um, other, other, other uh, applications. So okay. we're now getting into the market. A lot of people come here because they think they're getting a cooking solution mm -hmm. and they want a small digester. But when they see the, vers the you know, versatility of what the gas can do, they normally end up going home with a big system. Right. With a, with a water heater, with a brooder for brooding their chickens. Yeah. We're working on incubators now so you can incubate your eggs. Uh, we're working on, um, well, we've already got generators and what have you running on the biogas. There is just, this is endless. There's nothing that you can't do. Show Anything diesel, petrol, uh, kerosene can do, biogas can do. Show me something else. Let me show you one of the key uh, problems we have in our society is uh, groundwater contamination okay. uh, from pit latrines. Alrighty, let's have a look. Okay, so Dominic, what is this that you've brought me to see? This is an outhouse, just like a typical outhouse you'd see in any typical rural, uh, rural farmyard. The only difference is, instead of there being a pit underneath there, we've connected it directly to one of the domestic biogas digesters. So what's happening now as farms get smaller, everyone's digging a pit, another pit latrine and everyone's digging another well and you are literally getting sewage going into the groundwater yeah. and it's causing cholera, it's causing E. coli, it's causing tuberculosis and all kinds of other um, uh, ailments. So what we've done is we've eliminated the need for the pit latrine by attaching the toilet directly to the funnel. And here it the, is. Yes. So instead of there being the funnel, you have the toilet. How does this work? So what you do is you'll come and you'll do your business. Now a family of four people can't really produce enough gas to cook for the same four people or six people or even eight people. So you need to add something to the, to the, to the digester. Mm -hmm. So after you've done your business, you then take, here you have a ready mix of cow dung water. Okay. Same as the mix we had mm -hmm. over there. So every time when you finish doing your business, you literally flush the toilet using the dung. It washes the human waste in. It adds the correct microorganisms to it, 
to allow it to speed up its fermentation. Mm -hmm. You clean the toilet, clean the toilet house for the next user. And, and voila. there you go. Wow. And yeah. this this no doubt would be so beneficial in very very populated areas or refugee camps or or anywhere such as those absolutely absolutely in re the refugee camps like we have this in we're now going to put these actually into kakuma camp but on a much much larger larger scale oh excellent yeah so we've got a few of these in domestic in uh, masai mara in uh stony Athi. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got one pilot in um in rwanda they accepted it no problem most people say you know if the gas doesn't make me sick, bring it on because, you know, energy is a huge, huge problem in, in rural areas. Yeah, it's and sanitation is. is a second one. Okay. Having a clean toilet restores dignity and it also means you can have this attached to your house now. Right, because instead of being so far away from the main precisely. house. So yeah. you can use the loo at night, you know, even if it's raining. You, <laughs> you, you just make use of it. it. All right, uh, you may hear some chaos behind us. That's some dogs barking and some chickens um, cuckooing as well. But because we are on a farm, Dominic, what I can also see though in the background is something that looks like a massive balloon, if I may call it that. It is. It's a gas holding balloon for our now our really large scale biogas digesters, which are perfect for schools, institutions, large scale farms, businesses. Anybody who's got a lot of organic waste and wants to use it, you know, you know, uh, productively to, to, to do something uh, commercially. How, how do schools benefit and how would them using uh, the biogas ultimately um, protect the environment? Schools chop down. They don't collect firewood. They actually have trees cut. They don't have them cut. The brokers who bring mm -hmm. in the firewood cut down close to or even some schools larger than a whole football field. Of, 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 of trees, trees uh, in a year. There are over 6,000 schools in Kenya. Yeah. So you can imagine how big an area that is being destroyed. Oh, wow. Um, so really, really, this would benefit um, the environment in a huge absolutely. way. But absolutely. are people picking up on it? They are now. They are now. Um, there have been a lot of uh, failures in the constructed uh, systems. So now we are just introducing our large scale system. We've got four of them up running at the moment. And they have they don't have any issues and people really love them so, all right let's have a look yep so this is the balloon that we were seeing from the other side of the fence mm -hmm. it's a thirty thousand liter balloon connected to this is our t-rex series <laughs> m30 which is a thirty thousand liter digester uh, wow actually. and it really is huge um pretty big in comparison to um the the ones that you might find on the farm Yes, the domestic systems will give you, they're about 1,000 to 2,000 litres. This is 30,000 and will give you 30,000 litres. And this we still consider a baby in the T-Rex series. We can go up to 50, 60, even 100,000. What kind of industries uh, would benefit from this? Um, dairies, uh, large-scale uh, farm produce. What we, what we, one area we want to really promote this is people who, in Africa, we lose a huge amount of our, 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 our crops mm -hmm. through uh, rotting yeah. because there's just no storage. It, everything comes ripe at the same time, immediately during or after the rains. So we are developing drying machines to, to run directly off, off biogas. So you can dry daytime, nighttime, you know, while it's raining outside, you can still be drying using the biogas. Okay, and how, what does this require? I mean, does it require any sort of a generator? Because how is one meant to um, move the gas from that big um, balloon yeah. to, to here? Um, ideally, if you have the balloon, it's because you are in an institution type, a school or something. Mm -hmm. so, and then you just have small pumps that are sucking the gas to the, to the individual burners. If you are trying to sell gas, then we do ha we can compress the gas using the compressor um, directly into cylinders. Okay. Now the cylinders are very very heavy because they're made of industrial steel. They are each empty cylinder weighs about 130 kilos. Oh wow! Because um, so, you're compressing at 3,000 psi. Right. Um, unlike LPG, you're only compressing at less than 100 psi. So the pressure is extremely high. So it's, it's a whole new level of technology. But to move the gas in the cylinders, uh, we're housing them on trailers. Mm -hmm. And then the trailers will be pulled by a vehicle to the point of use. You plug it in. And then when the trailer is empty, you bring in a second trailer and just exchange the trailers. And Dominic, so you, you are these systems applicable elsewhere in the world or in East Africa? Absolutely. Um, we're getting very, very 
um, uh, numerous calls from the entire region, East and Central Africa. Rwanda has stopped using dome systems completely. They're using only our flexi biogas systems. We want our government to now start to uptake. Um, you know, Uganda, we got agents calling from Uganda, people calling to be agents from Uganda, from Tanzania, from Ethiopia. Really? Um, we're, we, we're now in with SNV in Kenya. Uh, so there is a uh, an SNV program to install 200,000, 20,000 systems, sorry, in the region. So we hope that the momentum will pick up. If it is a new technology, we are new, so of course there are the skeptics. Sure. And then also Kenyans like imported. That's another <laughs> big problem. <laughs> and so. this is all done here at home, isn't it? It's fully Kenyan. Absolutely. Why is biogas the way to go? How will the country at large benefit overall? Populations are increasing the forests are decreasing there's no way we are planting trees at the rate they're being taken out um, so there has to, we've got to do something I mean, the government is is putting in uh, you know feeding programs into schools and what have you but it's not providing fuel yeah the price of fuel goes up kerosene's going up lpg is going up okay lpg has just come down a bit but still you can't get lpg into rural areas there's just n no way to you know, there's no infrastructure for it to happen so there is waste. Every, almost everybody, you know, an African home is not complete without a cow. Yeah. So there is waste. There's vegetation everywhere. There's water hyacinth in Lake Victoria. There's methenge all over North Kenya. Mm. Uh, all of these are not pests to us. They are, they are, you know, God sent, um, you know, energy resources. So this, this, this can have an incredible impact on not just Kenya, but the entire Greenbelt right across East Africa. Yeah. India loves the technology. Uh, Cambodia, uh, we've got systems in there that are now proving to be extremely effective. Nepal have got systems, we've just exported wow. them, we haven't installed them yet. Uh, we've got systems in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Mali, in Gosh. South Africa, so in Kenya, Zimbabwe. Kenya really needs to love this system and install it and make it work. Exactly. <laughs> we, need, we need to have a voice. We'd love to get, to get into the National Domestic Biogas Program. We would love to get into just individuals, you know, uh, being aware that this technology is around. And um, it works. It's cheap. It's simple. It's you know, it, it's extremely versatile. So Dominic, what is the cost of all of this if somebody wanted to buy one? Um, our domestic systems are very, very. They're, they're very cheap. They're about one third to one fifth the cost of um, conventional constructed systems. Um, Gas-wise, they are easily five times more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, so you need a fifth of the amount of biomass uh, you need to, you know to get your volume of gas right these systems work out even cheaper because uh, the bigger you get of course economies of scale yeah so they work out you can they even go to a tenth of the cost of gas for gas a constructed system versus one of these so these range from about 350 okay. to yeah to the tops of a single unit of, in a region of about 1.6 million. Okay, and what um, about the smaller ones for those who are perhaps watching and think, hey, you know what, I've got my grandma back home. Okay. <laughs> Maybe yes. I, wanna, I wanna help her out. Yeah, so the domestic one, the standard domestic model is 61,000 uh, Kenyan shillings. The uh, 71,000 shillings, which is the, we, we call it the extra large one, will produce twice as much gas as the 61,000 one. The real baby one, we call it show show, for somebody who really doesn't need a lot of gas, <laughs> yeah. is 46,000. So, so yeah. pretty affordable when you think about really what you're getting out from it. Absolutely, they pay for themselves within a year very, very easily. And if you add on the fertilizer component, they pay for themselves within about six months. What um, are your hopes and aspirations? We'd like to see the next generation, you know, completely not using uh, charcoal or firewood. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we're trying to get into schools and children's homes because they are the next generation. If they grow up using this technology, we think that they just will never consider um, using, you know, going through the hassles of firewood collection and dirty charcoal and what have you. Because right. it, it is just so easy and so convenient. It certainly is. Dominic, thank you yeah. so much for your time on NTV Wild Talk. Much thank appreciated. You. All right, from the biogas and really how incredibly useful it is, both uh, in your shamba and uh, for your pocket as well. We shift focus now a time to our wild pick segment. Here are some of the photos that you sent in. This is a photo of Solomon Irungu. He was on a private boat on Lake Naivasha. He says he was enjoying the evening breeze and watching hippos, white pelicans and growing trees. Solomon says he had gone there to enjoy the tranquility of nature.
And then at the Birds of Prey Trust in Naivasha, this is a snap of Dunstan Maraka. He was posing in front of some owls and says he had gone to appreciate the role of birds of prey in the ecosystem. Jessica Nyawade was at the Nairobi Safari Walk. She took a selfie with a warthog in the background and said it's the first time that she's ever seen one. She did this because of the love of nature. And then at Mount Longanut, this is a snap of Jake Thor and Dindo Kariuki. They were posing at Kilele Ngamia, the highest point of Mount Longanut, and they say they are an adventurous couple who love to enjoy nature and all that comes with it. Hiking is our new thing, he says. And at Riven Zoya in Webuye, this is a photo of Robert Kisa. This is a selfie while crossing the river on a locally made bridge. Robert says that he adores nature greatly. If you want your photo showcased on our Wild Pick segment, just like our NTV Wild Facebook page and send a photo that shows you celebrating nature via private message. Include your full name, tell us where the photo was taken, what you were doing and why. And now, here's what's coming up on the NTV Wild documentary series on Saturday night. This little milk thief is a bull called Napasha, and he's nearly always eating. With Wendy as their mini matriarch and surrounded by caring keepers, life for the babies is as safe and secure as it can be. Wendy, Napasha, and the four older babies that are leaving are going to form the nucleus of a new herd at a new release site. It's such a shame that you can't tell them what's going on. At least then they'd be able to say their goodbyes. She looks quite sad, yeah, doesn't even, she? Yeah. She really does. She knows something's going to happen. Yeah. And they become like your children. You know, we get very emotional about it. So this is part of Team NTV Wild Talk enjoying a hot cup of tea that's actually been made using biogas and it tastes terrific. Well, if you want to learn more about Flexi Biogas, all you need to do is log on to www.biogas.co.ke or you can contact us on our NTV Wild Facebook page and we'll give you more information. Well, that's where we leave it on NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Thank you much for watching. See you again Tuesday, 10 p.m. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Ready? So Dom, it's good. Go in, right, go on. Sid, so where's my background for the intro? Ready? Ready? Oh! Oh, sorry. I no, okay. <laughs> thought they were gonna... <laughs> it looked like it was coming to me. Yeah, I kept saying Gaio Bass. <laughs> it was coming to me. We're out of time. <laughs> Sugar? One. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, cheers. <laughs> NTV Wild Talk, in partnership with the Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Direct.